So I got some new gouache and I thought I would film my first time using it because I knew it was going to be satisfying. And I also thought I would answer some of your guys' Q&A questions while I do that. I've been wanting to try this Holbein gouache. It's literally been teasing me on the internet for years. And I just haven't gotten my hands on it until now. And as soon as I started painting with it, I kicked myself for not getting it sooner because I absolutely fell in love with it. I will link it down below for those of you that want to try it. I'll put the exact palette that I got down below. And I'll put the paint palette that I'm using in the description too. Um, I probably shouldn't have squeezed it into the paint palette like you guys are seeing me do, but because I actually like the feeling of them better, like right out of the tube when they're wet. So I kind of like, kind of wasted this paint. I mean, you can re-wet it and use it. So I'm still going to use the paint that I squeezed out. But um, anyways, that's a side note. Just don't, don't, I guess don't do it like... How I did unless you're into that style of gouache but but it still looks pretty <laughs> so yeah this is this isn't sponsored by Holbein or anything I just genuinely love this paint now I'm obsessed with it and yeah I'll link it down below but anyways let's get into the Q&A questions I asked you guys to ask me anything over on my Instagram so I'm just gonna pick random questions and yeah First question is, how many hours a day do you paint? I, it just depends on, every single day is different. Sometimes I'll be painting for like five hours and sometimes I'll paint for 30 minutes. It just depends like, do I have to pack orders? Am I editing? Like, do I not feel like working that day? I don't know. It, it's, it varies so, so much. Um, I paint as much as I personally desire to paint in a day because I don't ever want to burn myself out by forcing myself to paint. I feel like that's really important when this becomes like your job. I don't have a set answer to that. That question. Do you have any advice for art businesses? I have like kind of some random videos on my channel pertaining to art and business, but that's sort of a broad question. Maybe that would be another good video to ask if you guys have questions about having an art business, you can leave them down below because I just get so many questions all the time about running an art business. So, so maybe I will do another video on that. So if you have any questions regarding art and business leave them down below because i would definitely be willing to answer some of those for you guys are you a self-taught artist if so what steps do you take to get so good i love your art style thank you i am i would say like mostly self-taught uh i did go to college for one year but it was like jet eds and some art classes um and i wasn't actually in the major that i wanted to be in so I went to just like a normal college and to get into, I wanted to be an illustrator, so to get into the illustration program you had to do foundation studies which is like just basic art like sculpture, drawing, like all sorts of different types of art and then they would place you into your program if you got in. So all I did was foundational studies, I actually didn't get to take any painting classes really. And of course I took like art classes in high school but other than that I have pretty much taught myself and also I don't know if a lot of people know this but my dad is also a painter so I was like raised in a very creative household. I've, I've been raised around paint my entire life so I'm very very like it has become like second nature to me and I also just love it so much so I do spend a lot of time painting. Uh, so majority self-taught um, and it's just practicing and practicing and putting in hours and hours and hours and hours and just fine-tuning your painting skills and your craft so yeah I guess that's my story art story <laughs> any tips for gaining confidence to size up on canvases I find this so daunting honestly in my experience painting large and painting small is exactly the same Honestly, it is pretty much the same. Like you're just doing the same thing on like a larger scale and you're just using a little bit more paint. Go ahead and just go get a big ass canvas. Wait, I'm trying not to swear. Just go ahead and get a big canvas. Get the biggest canvas you can find and paint something on it. And like, you'll realize it's not like that daunting. I think the most daunting part is getting like the first mark on it, literally. Like, like don't let it intimidate you. I used to get really intimidated by working big for some reason, but now it feels the same. Like working big or small just feels the same. It's not that daunting, so yeah. My camera's gonna die, hold I'm obsessed with the way you put colors together. Do you find a color scheme before painting? Honestly, no, I do not. Um, I have worked with my specific set of paints for so long that I just kind of know, like, I don't, I don't know. I just kind of put color where my brain wants to put color and like use color how my brain wants to use it. Like obviously like a painting like like this painting is like completely made up. So um, 
I would say 95% of my work, I don't use a reference photo. I, it's just from my brain. So I think that's why my color schemes come out so crazy because I'm kind of just winging it. People ask about this a lot and my color scheme is all the colors. I, I just try to put in as much color as I possibly can. I like to sneak in colors that normally like wouldn't be there because it, it just like it makes the painting a little more interesting like but I don't pick any color schemes in specific when I'm uh, painting like I don't plan the colors as I'm painting I just kind of get an idea like oh I want to make a tree with an eyeball and then the colors come along like as I'm painting so um, I don't have any advice on that sorry <laughs> Any tips for someone who hates making reels? I actually want to make a whole video on reels. I was lucky enough to be in a I was lucky enough to be in a Zoom group with Meta. Um, I actually got to be on a call with a bunch of other visual artists on Instagram and talk about reels and reels growth strategies with people at Meta and the Meta team and reels best practices so i actually i would actually love to share some of the things that i learned from them with you guys and i have also seen really good extreme growth through using reels for my art page and my art business um, so i'm probably gonna make a whole separate video on this just because i feel like i could help someone out with that and yeah i got you on the reels but I have a lot more to say than I probably can say in the middle of this Q&A, so I'm going to save it for a different video. How do I make prints at home? Um, so when I was starting out, that was like a big thing. I was wondering, like, how am I going to make prints in my work? It was daunting to me. Like, I really wanted to. Like, I was ready to take that step from, like, making art my hobby into turning into prints and trying to sell my work. And I was like, oh my gosh, I have to buy a printer. I have to buy ink. Like, I'm... I don't know what to do. This is this is going to be so expensive. Like I don't know if I'm ready to take this step because that stuff can get really pricey. Like refills on ink can be like 200 bucks on a good printer. And so I started looking around and I ended up finding my local print shop. I get so many questions on how I make my prints. I go to a local print shop. I don't want to say what town I live in, but it's local. There's one in the world, so um, it doesn't matter unless you live where I live, which you probably don't, the majority of you. So my best advice to people starting out is go find a print shop. You, you do not have to buy your own printer. There are professionals that specialize in this and don't let the idea of making your own prints at home like scare you or stop you. Like you can literally just go find a place that does it. I know there's a website called Cat Print that a lot of people use. I've never used it, um, but they make fine art prints. You can find fine art printers online. But yeah, I don't, I don't make my prints at home. Um, I don't have any desire to make my prints at home. I would rather let a professional do it. So I don't, I feel like a lot of artists don't even realize that that's available to them. Like I feel like a lot of people think that people are just printing them at their house, which I mean, some people do, but that's not my style really, and yeah, you don't have to do that. You can definitely go and just get your prints made. That's what I recommend, so. Where do you print your transfers for your shirts and hoodies? Okay, if you guys watched this video, um, I showed the process of me doing my first clothing launch. This is actually one of my hoodies. And in that video, I got DTF transfers and like pressed all my own shirts, and when I did my first launch, that's how I was making my stuff, but then I realized, A, it's not sustainable for me to sit there and make like 50 shirts when I have this to do, I have prints to pack, I have videos to edit, I have content to make. It, it was not going to be a sustainable business model for me personally, um, so I stopped doing that. And B, I want to have a serious top-notch lifestyle brand and the quality wasn't like my favorite favorite in the world, like the way it just felt on the shirt, like it was fine, but like having someone print um, DTG direct to garment print on your fabric. It's just a lot softer and smoother and I didn't have the capability to do that at home. Um, so I actually am not doing that process for my clothing business anymore. I have switched back to using a manufacturer. Now all my stuff is like printed directly onto the fabric versus being pressed onto it. I honestly don't recommend you guys do that because it was so much more work than I thought it was going to be. There's so many, so many different companies that you can get them from. Okay, that was a long-winded answer for that though, but there are so many different types of heat transfers and I'm not going to answer what 
I use specifically because I don't want you guys to come at me if your heat transfer didn't work properly because I gave you the wrong type for your type of hoodie. You need to research what type of DTF transfer you need. Like there's there's different types for different fabric to my understanding. Yeah, so that's something that you just need to Google. It just depends on like what you're printing on and what you're pressing on. So let's see, I'll answer one more. Actually, you know what? I don't think I'm gonna answer anymore because we've been filming for a little bit. I don't know if this is gonna be too long for the actual footage I have for this, so. I guess that's it for questions from you guys. If you guys like this, I definitely can do more Q&A style type things. I wanna do like more paint with me slash paint with me and like chit chat videos. I used to do those. I used to do those quite a bit. I think I've done like five of those now, so. But I haven't done one in a while. So if you guys would like that, let me know as well. That is it for my experience with this new gouache palette. I absolutely love it. Uh, it's just so beautiful and like matte and the way the colors lay down. So good. I love it. So yeah, usually I paint in acrylic, but I've been eyeing that palette forever. So had to try it out in the sketchbook. Uh, that's about it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. Let me know if you guys liked this painting style type of video. I can definitely make more. It was a lot of fun and yeah, I guess I'll see you guys soon. I love you guys so much. I'll see you on the next one. Bye.